Hey friends, in this video we're going to talk about some of the first steps that we do here, how to wrench on restoring a motorcycle or just trying to diagnose and figure out uh, what we're dealing with. The, the big focus of this video really came from about when should you start that compression test. You've seen in a million other videos we talk about compression test, compression test, compression test, right? But there's something you want to consider and I recommend watching this video for some detailed information on why you don't want to jump right into a compression test on a vehicle that you're not familiar with or especially something that's been sitting for a long time. So stay tuned, check this out. We got some good tips again for you here at HowToWrench.com. Hey friends, I'm going to run out a quick little video on things to do or consider or think about when you're talking about restoring a motorcycle. We got a, a customer brought in this 84 Nighthawk that was a uh, a dream bike of theirs when they were a kid and they want to go ahead and put the time and money into it and I'm still always cautious because anytime somebody says you know there's no budget uh, don't worry about it eh, I think you need to think about it so looking at you know what the bike is worth to you is one thing but you still want to kind of approach that whether it's yourself or for your customer on what am I really dealing with when I look at this bike right away I'm like well it's 84 Nighthawk and it is super 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 in need of some love. Uh, it's just a really, really rough shape. I mean, here's a really expensive one when the fork tubes are all pitted and rusted. It needs tires, it needs brakes, it needs everything. And the customer found this set of carbs from a junkyard and said, oh, they look clean. You just can't trust that. So I said, well, let's, let's just not kill your dream, but let's go ahead and look at, you know, what exactly should we do? And I'll give you kind of my rundown or my checklist. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that work order, I'm going to document all that stuff that I see visually, uh, like the fork seals, the tires, the brakes, any safety items. That is super crucial. It's only two wheels. Don't skip any of that stuff. Some of the tools on the floor there uh, are my favorite go-tos. When you decide that you're going to bring something back to life and you don't have any idea where it's at, this thing's been sitting 20 years, you guys have all seen me do numerous videos on these from a spark tester to a uh, compression tester and leak down tester. A lot of people will jump into doing uh, compression testing and, and that's a bad idea on something you don't know anything about because the motor could be stuck and the moment you try to hit that starter, if those rings are stuck to the cylinder, you could ch take a chance of breaking the ring or, or just having something worse. Uh, I don't know, it'd be, well, it'd be worse than breaking a ring, but you get where I'm going there, is, is we just don't want to cause extra damage. More likely than not, if it's been sitting that long, it's going to have to come apart and be freshened up, but who knows? So the thing that we do at How to Wrench that I can't recommend enough is to take and pull the spark plugs. We've got them in the box here. You can see that as we're pulling stuff out, we're taking the time also to number them so we can see which cylinder. That might show you some evidence of how it was running if you see a spark plug that's different on a multi-cylinder. The other thing that we're going to do is we're a big fan of this uh, Marvel Mystery Oil. And we're going to take, pull the plugs, put this down on the cylinder, and shoot uh, you know, 50 to 100 uh, cc's into the cylinder and, on all of them and just let it sit. We're going to let it sit overnight. This thing's been sitting 20 years, one more day is not going not gonna to kill you. We're going to let that sit, and then once that's uh, sat in there, we're going to take and find out whether the motor will turn over. A lot of people want to go right to the crankshaft, and I really avoid that. Sometimes they have a real small pin on this ignition advancer, and I don't want to shear that. The other thing I don't want to do is I don't want to be trying to go back and forth, back and forth, and if the motor's really stuck, all I'm going to do is loosen that bolt. That's going to give me problems too. So here's what we do. And this, this trick works if there's no clutch problem. If you had a slipping, burned up clutch, or worse shit, it's missing or gone, this won't work. But we're going to go ahead and put the bike in top gear. Then we're going to come around, and we're going to, after that sat for a while, we're going to take here and use the drivetrain to turn the motor over. And as you can see, this motor's not stuck. Uh, it sat with the mystery oil in there, so it's turning over nice, and you can see that rotating. And that tells me a couple things. It tells me that, you know, the motor's not stuck. I can kind of feel how that's rotating to see if there's a, like a real heavy drag or a bad uh, spot that it catches. And I, I just kind of get an idea. Now that I've done that, now I can switch to my compression test. Now, since we put that marble mystery oil in there, I'm going to recommend you get a paper towel and kind of hover or, you know, cover up above the other holes. 
that you're not testing so that you're not taking that you know that oil and shooting it all over the place so there's your little tip on that um, then I'll switch to a leak down tester I, I really want to know how the valves are sealing the integrity of the piston rings I want to capture all the information possible to make a good determination on, on what I'm looking at and then the last one if you haven't seen any of the videos I've done yet on this GTC we got a couple of their different testers here if, if you haven't seen these to where we can actually measure secondary voltage this tool is way cool they have a model for around 100 bucks this is like their $250 one or 230 I think I saw now this thing's killer because it also tell you whether you have weak spark now why I like to really do that again on older motorcycles is if, if I had weak spark or no spark, and let's say I needed an igniter, you gotta find out is the stuff even available or it could be really expensive. You know, a customer comes in and thinks, oh, I'm gonna do a carb job for, you know, 500 bucks, and you're like, whoa, forks, tires, wheels, brakes, no spark, this stuff can add up really, really fast. So, this video is not meant to discourage motorcycle restoration. Eat your heart out, do whatever you want. But what I'm trying to do, is trying to give you really an assessment maybe of how to buy a vehicle, uh, how to you know just have really good communication if, if you're a shop, trying to work with your customer, and then for yourself just to have an idea of what you're really looking at. You wouldn't want to go through a whole bunch of stuff and then not even have your eye on the ignition, let's say, and then all of a sudden you're ready to go because you've done everything else. You're like, gosh darn, I don't have, I don't have spark or I got weak spark. So those are just some tips and tricks we put all the links uh, in the videos below of the tools of the other videos that we use those tools in great detail on to try and help you uh, have the skill sets to uh, do these uh, jobs you need to do to get on with your uh, motorcycle restoration, work, or career. So that's all we got today. Thanks for tuning in to HowToWrench.com. As always, subscribe, like, share, and if you got tips or tricks that you want to put in the comment, uh, comments below, for things that you do on thinking about restoration or starting that restoration project, we love it. We're a community here, and we love your uh, thought and input. Anyway, we're going to get back at it. So as always, make it a great day, and keep wrenching. Hey, what are you doing? Have you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell? You're going to be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up.